Today on the 16th edition of the Sports Centre, we decided to focus our attention in terms of basketball in Sri Lanka. To talk about it, we have a very special guest. He represented Sri Lanka at the 2019 South Asian Games that was held in Nepal, Kathmandu and clinched silver for the first time in our history. And what excites me the most that he represented himself in the United States representing his college in the college basketball. He is none other than Pranit Udumalagala. Thank you very much Pranit for accepting my invitation to feature on the show. Hi Martin, thank you so much for having me. What excites me the most is that you are the first known basketball player from Sri Lanka to represent at college level in the United States. Can you briefly explain how that opportunity arose and uh, how about uh, the experience? Yes, Martin. Um, the time that I had in college playing basketball is undoubtedly the best time that I've uh, had in my basketball career, the standards and everything. How it all happened was um, after my A-levels here in Sri Lanka, I was looking for an opportunity to go and play college basketball in the U.S. Um, I tried a lot of the times to get a scholarship, but I couldn't make it work. And then, um, because I did a good A-levels, um, I got an academic scholarship at Texas Western University. I went to Texas Western University, and in the first week, I straight away sent an email to the coach, Coach Brendan, and um, asked him for a tryout. By that time, the tryouts were over, but um, long story short, I get an opportunity to do a tryout and I got the chance to um, do the tryout and make it to the team. Um, there's two tiers. You have a varsity and a junior varsity. I first made it to the junior varsity team and uh, right in the middle of the season, I get the opportunity to move up to the varsity and represent the college team and be a part of it for four years. What did you actually follow in the States? Um, basketball, I mean, I gathered so much in, in basketball because making it to um, basketball, college basketball team was at that time the biggest achievement uh, that, I, that I have and I was so excited and it took me so much of hard work to get into that level um, because I realized when I first made it that I'm right in the below, I'm in the shallow end compared to these other, other basketball players in the US. So I worked my way up and um, four years of college basketball, being able to win a national championship and three conference championships uh, was the best time ever. If you talk about basketball in the United States, what comes to your mind is NBA. Absolutely. And can you tell me what is that gap holding the college level basketball and the NBA level? Yes, that's a good question, Martin. So, um, NBA is the highest level in basketball in the whole world. But if you focus on US, again, NBA comes right on top and then you have the NBA G League. Um, but you get drafted to this league from the NCAA Division I college circuit. Uh, so college circuit has two things, NCAA Division I and NAIA Division I. Uh, you got NCAA and NAIA. NCAA has one, two, three divisions and NAIA has one, two, three divisions. Before that, you have junior colleges those are the colleges that you have only two years uh, and then you have the high school. So when you get done from high school as a kid, you have the option of going into a NCAA university, an IA university, a junior college. So I, my high school was here, basically I did my A levels here and then I got the opportunity to go to NAIA. Which is the second one. level. Which is uh, like the second level, but it's a Division One again. So NCAA Division One, NAIA Division One. But NCAA, how that works is those are big universities. Like their average student count is around 30,000 to 35,000 students, whereas a NAIA is, is more, uh, more than half uh, of it or, or a little bit lesser uh, a student count. So those are big universities, the programs are bigger, uh, the, um, the funds are bigger. Um, so any top high school kid would definitely go to NCAA first and then consider NAIA Division I. There are um, other reasons where um, NCAA Division I players end up in NAIA um, because you have a grade that you need to maintain in college um, so maybe you're not up to that uh, academic level so because of that you've lost your opportunity in NCAA but doesn't mean when you come to NAIA you uh, can get away from those because NAIA has the exact same rules um, so uh, majority of the basketball players in NCAA will make it up to the league and then uh, Hanfu in NAIA will make it up to the league as well 
So I guess you were just one step short in terms of making it to the league. Yes, absolutely, the absolutely. Uh, what happened during the time? You know, um, what do you think went the, wrong? The truth is, uh, Martin, when you, um, when I made it to the uh, Texas Wesleyan basketball team, I, I was the last. I was the last basketball player in my team. I mean, in terms of skills, strength. Um, you talk about a complete basketball player. I feel like the only thing that I could match was my jump, my vertical. I think that's the only thing that I was, uh, that way I felt like I'm there with them. But if you talk about skill, if you talk about coordination, footwork, shooting percentages, strength, um, I was just far behind them, you know? And uh, part of the reason is, um, if you look at the bigger picture from infrastructure to uh, the path they have for a basketball player is, is so much higher, you know? A player looks at NBA and be like, okay, this is my goal. And from a very young age, they work professionally to go to that stage. Whereas from us, we don't have that bigger goals, right? Even when I was growing up, um, the mentality I had was like, oh yeah, nobody from Sri Lanka can make it to college basketball. They're too big, they're too good, and all that stuff. So, um, when I made that, I was, I was the last, like I said before, and I had to just keep on working. The first thing I did was to go to the weight room, you know, go to the gym, work on my strength, work on my um, physical capabilities to hang out with the guys. And then number two was my skills aspect and then the shooting and then being able to have that sense, being able to have that ability to move with the, move with the guys. Um, and I think I did really well uh, until my fourth year uh, where that was my goal, where I wanted to really um, put myself out there. Because if you look at the first three, if you look at my junior, which is the third year, where we won the national championship, um, my statistics or my average number of uh, time of playing wasn't that great, you know? I was probably like the eighth man in the team, so even if you take a rotation, I was probably be like the last rotative player. Um, if you've got 12 players, not all 12 plays, you average have like an eight man rotation, and I would, I would be with like the eighth man, you know what I mean? So my, even my average playing minute times were around um, six minutes, four to six minutes, you know? So, uh, but fourth year was, was the year I was preparing myself. I flew to LA uh, during the summer, uh, trained for three months there, especially aiming at my fourth year, because in my fourth year, I was the only fourth year player. Uh, so I had already had three years of experience playing in that program, in that coach, uh, under that coach, and um, I had a, a good chance of, uh, you know, putting myself or upgrading myself inside the program. But unfortunately, I um, suffered a, a, a huge um, injury in my left knee, and then I, I wasn't able to play. Uh, but I was still a part of the team, part of the program, and uh, like I said, those four years uh, was amazing. How is the injury situation at this point of time, and is there any possibility oh. of you moving back to US to pursue that dream one more time? Martin, I would say I'm better than who I was before. Uh, two reasons. Number one, right after the injury, my college and my basketball program um, really took care of me. It took me around 10 to 11 months um, I, I mean, thanks to my uh, medical team from the 80s to the athletic director to my coaching staff to the school administration, they really took care of me. Um, so when I got done uh, recovering, I graduated and then I came back to Sri Lanka and uh, I started working on myself. So with the four years of intense basketball experience and training and then um, coming back at this point, uh, I'm in the best of shape right now. I mean, like I said, better than before. I'm in best of my shape physically. I think my skill wise, I'm so much ahead than I uh, was before. Will I go back to US? Um, I really don't think so. Uh, two reasons, I mean, one reason, the main reason is um, if you look at the league or um, similar leagues, they want to, they would mainly focus on younger uh, professional basketball players. And when I say young, they would go as young as 20 to 22, 23 year olds. Um, so I think compared to that, I think my time has passed a little bit, but I still focus on myself uh, playing here locally and uh, playing South Asian leagues. Um, the Nepal Basketball League is coming up. Um, they've already contacted me, which is gonna be in like June, July. Um, so I've, I'm more focused on the South Asian leagues uh, if there's any uh, and be playing on those. 
uh, putting all of this into perspective, uh, skill-wise at this point of time, you played in the US and you played for Sri Lanka as well. And I'm sure that there is a lot of uh, space in terms of gap that needs to be filled for us to at least improve ourselves from where we are right now. Yes. Can you briefly explain, you know, what is that gap that is holding us apart? Martin, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure um, a lot of the basketball players have, have heard this answer from me uh, before. The biggest, how I would say, um, missing point that we have, or the gap we have, is the standard of playing basketball. Like, how do we get this standard high, basically, right? Um, you want, uh, as a kid, you want to see basketball players in Sri Lanka in the national team or in the club level playing high level of basketball, right? In order for them to play a high level of basketball or their skill level to be high, um, there needs to be other things that's in place. For an example, like you play in the national team, but there's no professional approach in the national team or there's no financial value in it. Um, there's no infrastructure. In, in the basketball industry, then that um, goal or those standards will not be reached. For an example, like basketball skills is something that you need to be training every single day as a basketball player. And then you have the strength and conditioning aspect of it. Like you need to be professionally following a strength and conditioning program in order for you to be in the uh, professional physique or that standard for you to play in a professional arena. In, in Sri Lanka, um, I, I really don't think the Sri Lankan basketball players are in a, a strict strength and conditioning program or continuously throughout the year focus on their skills, right? And, and part of the reason is when the season is not there, they, they gotta focus on their jobs, their families, and, and, and all these other um, responsibilities they have, and then the infrastructure. Because as a, as a national basketball player, we still don't have a place of our own, right? The Basketball Federation doesn't have a place of their own in terms of a, a, a court. Basketball players cannot go to this place saying, okay, it's a national basketball court where national basketball players are allowed to go in at any time and get their repetitions, get their practice done, you know? And, and um, when the national team is practicing, the Basketball Federation still has to look for courts that's around Colombo, book them, see if they have the funds to book them, and then if they can do it, they'll do it. The basketball team will practice that during that time. The basketball player alone cannot go, or they don't have that means or ways or the infrastructure to go and just practice on their own. You know, and strength and conditioning program, there's the basketball system in Sri Lanka doesn't have anything like that. Like personally, myself, I have my own trainers. Um, that, that I do training with. Athlete Unleash is my training program where um, I personally do it and I um, take care of my strength and conditioning part. There's no support from the basketball federation or um, at least put myself to the side now because I've kind of stepped down from the national team. But even to an existing player, there's no such system, Martin. You know, so the gap, the gap that you asked me is being created due to so many bigger reasons, bigger picture, which ultimately I think that comes down to what have you done to create that value for the, for the basketball player, right? I mean, his skill level to his strength and conditioning to uh, his mental side, um, what is there? Because right now, it's whatever that basketball player does on his own. If he does his own strength and conditioning, if he does his own, um, um, skill training, if he does his own um, mental side of the game, that's all he has. There's no outside support, there's no other than that there's nothing that a basketball player in Sri Lanka can hold into in terms of um, reaching the next level. And also from a young age, um, it's whatever you do, basically. It's whatever, how far you're willing to spend your own money, how far you're willing to um, find knowledge or do skill training or whatever. It's, it's, it's individually, whatever you can afford, whatever you can do, well, is, is, is the problem now. We spoke about the gap that is holding us apart in terms of US and Sri Lanka. 
Our closest opponent uh, when it comes to South Asia is India. We clinched a silver medal, which means we are number two in terms of South Asia. Uh, what is that we need to do to in order for us to kind of you know get ourselves elevated to the level where India is right now? This is com common question, Marin. Um, India is naturally bigger than us. However, I'm sure everybody in our industry would agree that we are faster than them. We are, we are small in size, but we are faster than them. The gap is they're professional basketball players and we are not. The same theory that I spoke earlier, they have so many basketball tournaments in their own states, and they have basketball tournaments in the national level. Uh, they have players who play overseas. They have a very organized structure where their way of getting ready for an international tournament. They, all the players come for a camp from all their states. They fly in and they camp up and they train. A practical side for us to do something like that is we can never camp and train because the basketball players have their own jobs. Whereas in India, they're all, if I'm not mistaken, all the, or most of the basketball players, or, or if not all, are given a government job. They are given a government job and by the federations, they, they have a system as such where you're offered a government job and then you're, when your um, service is needed, obviously you come in, you camp in and you train, you get paid for that separately for your basketball commitment. You get paid for that separately. Um, their states pay for their uh, players, their national body play, pay for their players, um, and um, there's, it's, it's a professional approach for them. Whereas for us, uh, the maximum we would train for a tournament, give or take, would be less than two months. Two months? Yes, less than two months. And that too is not every day, right? Um, the highest we pay, uh, we practice is for the South Asian Games. Uh, there were kind of camping done for the South Asian Games, uh, given the emphasis on that tournament and the government involved. Um, and that is so far the best um, practice approach we've had, at least during my tenure in the national team, the two SOG games that are played uh, has been the best approached uh, tournaments. Um, it has its own falls, ups and downs, um, but commonly for any basketball tournament we go overseas, we, we practice less than two months, less than two months and the whole proceedings of selecting a basketball team takes for so long, it's everything's the last moment. The basketball team is announced at the last moment. Uh, the coaches would know who their team is, what type of a strategy they would want to come up with. Uh, I don't think we've ever had a, um, an offensive structure, or offensive strategy for basketball because those things take time to build up. If we have a defensive strategy, those things take time to build up. A coach needs to spend so much of a time with the players to know his rotation, to know his um, first five, his second five, his approach. Whereas those countries, even if you take India, they would look at Sri Lanka and they say, okay, this play is such, this play is such, there as a team is such, this is our strategy. Whereas for us, it's let's go, let's do our best and come back.